Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are diving into something exciting, setting up a single spa project using TypeScript. I'll be working with the latest version of Create Single Spa, which is 5.09, so you will be seeing the most up-to-date setup process. Before we jump into the actual configuration, let's take a quick look at the environment. I am running Node.js version 22.16.0. Make sure yours is up-to-date to avoid any compatibility issues. And just to double check, the create single spa version I am using is 5.09. Alright, with everything in place, let's get started with the setup. Now that our environment is ready, let's kick things off by initializing the root microfronte. We will start with the usual command that is nbx create single spa. This kicks off the setup wizard. For the directory name, I am entering root mfe. When it asks for the microfront end type, I am selecting root config. This will be the central hub that wires together all our microfront end apps. Next, I am choosing npm as the package manager. Then I confirm that I want to use TypeScript. Now we get to the layout engine. I am enabling it because it helps manage routing and DOM placement across microfront ends. And finally, I enter my organization name called env. Once we hit enter, it will start installing all the dependencies for our root microfront end. Okay, the installation has completed now. Next, let's initialize our home microfront end. For this one, I will give the directory name as home mfe. And the type should be single spy application. Framework, let's select as React. Package Manager, NPM, TypeScript, yes. Module Format, make sure to give it as ESM. Organization Name, Code ENV, and finally, Project Name, Home MFE. Now you will notice the dependency installation has failed. If we take a closer look at the error message, the error coming from React Testing Library. This package is commonly used for writing unit tests in React, but for now, we are not focusing on testing. We are just trying to get our microfront end up and running. So let's temporarily remove it from our package.json. Don't worry, you can always reinstall it later when you are ready to write tests. Then let's run npm install again. Cool, now you can see installation has completed without any issues. Before moving on to the next step, I am going to update a few key packages. Those are React, React DOM, Types React, and Types React DOM. Why? Because type definitions, those types packages were on different versions compared to the main React libraries. And mismatched versions can lead to subtle compatibility issues, especially when working with TypeScript single spa setup. After the update, all four packages are now aligned on version 19.1. This ensures consistency across our code base and helps avoid type mismatches or unexpected behavior down the line. Now let's verify that our home microfront end is running properly. To do that, we will launch it in standalone mode. This allows us to test the home microfront end independently without wiring it into the full application shell just yet. This command is spin up the development server. By default, it runs on local hosts 8080. Let's open that in the browser. Okay, looks good. Our home microfront end is rendering as expected. Now, I will make a small change to the UI to confirm that hot reloading is working. In src root component.tsx, I will add the test and just a simple string verify the update. And just like that, the browser updates automatically. We can see the new test rendered on the page. That means hot reloading is working perfectly. Cool. Next, let's switch back to our root microfront end. Open up the index.ejs file. This is where we define our import maps, which tell single spa where to find each microfront end. Let's insert our home microfront end import. If you are unsure how these imports should be constructed, I recommend watching my previous videos in my single spa series. Now, 
In addition to that, we need to add CDNs for React, React DOM, and React DOM client. So these are essential for shared dependencies across micro frontends. And you will find these CDNs in the video description, by the way. And finally, let's change our port for home micro frontend as 9001. Also, make sure to change the home micro frontend's port to 9001 in its package JSON as well. Now, let's head back to our root micro frontend and open up microfrontlayout.html. Inside the layout file, locate the root configuration and make sure the default route points to home MFE like this. Let's start the root micro frontend by running npm start command. So this will launch it on port 9000. Next, let's start the home micro frontend. This will run on port 9001 as we configured earlier. And there it is. Our home micro frontend is now successfully loaded on the default root. You can see it render right away when you visit localhost 9000. And let's test the live reload again. Make a small change in your home micro frontend. And let's head back to the browser. And we can see the update reflected instantly. That confirms everything is wired up correctly. And our micro frontend architecture is working as expected. And there is something else I want to dive into today. A couple of weeks ago, someone left a comment asking how to include a utility type micro frontend in a TypeScript based micro frontend setup. So it's a great question and today we are going to explore exactly that. Okay then, let's initialize our utility micro frontend as well. So directory name I will use as UI utility and type should be utility module. Framework I will select as React, package manager, npm, TypeScript, yes. Organization name, code env, project name, UI utility. And the finally, module format ESM. All right, quick update before we move forward. We are running into the same issue with React testing library that we saw earlier. So let's go ahead and clean that up. First, I'm going to remove it from packet.json and then reinstall it fresh to make sure we are working with this clean slate. And I'll also update the React and type packages just like we did for the home microphone. We will use port 9002 for the URL microphone to avoid any conflicts with home and root microphone. Open the package.json of the URL microphone and update the start script like this. Now it's time to add our reusable component in our URL microphone. So navigate to code env .esx. For this example, I'm going to add the simple reusable button component. This component can now be imported and used by other micro frontends, keeping our UI consistent and modular. Now let's update our import maps in index.tjs. So we will add an entry for the URL micro frontend so the root config knows where to find it. To use the button component we created in our URL micro frontend, we need to perform a few key configurations. First, navigate to the webpack.config.js file in the home micro frontend. Here, we need to declare the URL micro frontend as an external module. This allows webpack to treat it as a shared dependency and avoid bundling it directly. Once the external is configured, we can import the button component from our URL micro frontend like this. However, you can notice an import error at this point. That's because TypeScript doesn't yet recognize the external module. To resolve the import error, we need to declare the module in declarations.dts file. This tells TypeScript to treat UI utility button as a valid module, even though it's coming from an external source. Now that we have wired everything together, it's time to see it in action. Let's start by running each micro frontend individually.
Okay, let's open our browser and let's see everything works. Perfect, we can see now the test render from the home micro frontend and the button component coming in from the UI util micro frontend. So everything is working just as expected, modular, clean and reusable. And that's all for today's video. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. I would love to help out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share the video if you have found it helpful. And it really supports the channel too. Until the next one, see you soon. Happy coding.